So this here, the soldiers are doing shoot, move, and communicate. Um, they're doing battle buddy team drills, uh, bounding, uh, taking cover behind a pallet. Uh, here you can see soldiers low crawling. Uh, it's uh, one of the movement techniques when navigating low obstacles. So yeah, they're all healthcare providers, technicians. Um, I think the highest ranking individual we had, uh, the 06 Colonel uh, Dentac Commander, was out doing some of these drills all the way down to the, the newest privates working in uh, pharmacy and radiology. And right here, they're just bounding. One soldier sets up, um, takes point, uh, lays down fire on the enemy. Uh, that suppresses the enemy. It gives the other soldier an opportunity to stand up and bound. Uh, they alternate, and that's how they cover ground to get closer to their objective. If we get out there and we can provide good training to the soldiers and, and get after these Army Warrior tasks, and the soldiers can have fun while they're doing it, um, it's even better. It takes hold more. We instill that in them. Uh, they're getting good training, and not they're not miserable while they're doing it. There you go. That works, too. Put your hands out together. Yep. I have used the fore and aft, I have used the personnel drag, uh, and those are about the only two. This here, this is uh, Staff Sergeant Connolly, he's the NCIC of our SRP on Fort Riley. Uh, he's also an expert field medical badge holder, uh, one of the few on the installation. So right now he's, he's going over different movement techniques. Uh, the soldiers are battle buddy paired up. Um, and they're demonstrating and practicing these, these movement techniques to move across the 25 meter field. The one soldier uh, uh, imitates a, a casualty that's unconscious um, or uh, severely wounded that can't move on their own and they're just practicing the several different movement techniques to get a soldier um, out, of, out of fire and back into cover. You see you have these extra rivet holes on each side. Take these, feed the open end through, the knot will catch on the other side. Now you have an extra yeah, what they're doing there, they're strapping the soldier up and moving them to an HLZ, uh, helicopter landing zone, uh, to to evacuate them out of the uh, the area. Um, what we're seeing here for uh, patient loading, this is hot, and the difference is the helicopter's on. It's running, it's ready to take off cold. Um, in perspective, is just the, uh, the helicopter isn't running. So that's all this is, is we're, we've moved the soldier from uh, point of contact or point of injury to behind cover. Um, we've transported them on skid or litter to an HLZ for evacuation. Uh, and then we finish that up with the, the hot and cold training on how to actually load a patient into um, an aircraft. All the way to the rear before we rotate this. Okay. So explain that. So this is uh, Sergeant Rasmussen. He's an NCO in our radiology department here at the hospital. Um, he is also a professional weapons instructor, so that's a great asset uh, here within the hospital. Um, right here, what he's doing is the uh, assembly and disassembly of an M17 pistol uh, for one of the soldiers. Now it won't go all the way back in the battery. There's several several parts to being trained on the shoot aspect of Army War uh, tasks in uh, battle drills. Uh, this portion, weapon familiarization, is the uh, assemb or disassembly and reassembly of the weapon. Soldiers were also required to go to a range and qualify, uh, either on the M17 pistol or the M4 rifle. So what we're doing here in a classroom environment is doing the familiarization with the weapons uh, and to include that, that disassembly and reassembly of the firearm while learning what all of the components are and how they work in conjunction to make the, the weapon. Right here, uh, this is Staff Sergeant Blake. Uh, he's he's going over the proper, uh, there's new standards for the M4 qualification where we utilize this wall for stability when we're firing downrange. And he's, he's just going over steady practice name. We're using a uh, laser mounted bore scope so that although we can't fire in the classroom, the soldiers are able to monitor uh, the placement of their bullet during the firing process by using the, the, the bore scope with the laser on the target on the other side of the classroom. Yeah, so this is C-burn training, chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear. 
Um, what they're doing is they have what we call a pro mask, gas mask, um, and they're they're demonstrating the proper technique on how to don that mask within the set time limit. Now, by standard, every soldier, as you can see here, from the moment um, gas um, is announced in the area, they have nine seconds to open up their, their pro mask case on their left hip, don the mask, clear it, uh, and then close the mask and then signal uh, to their, their battle buddies on the left and the right that there's gas in the area. Some of these skills um, although we learn them, we do them over time. If you don't do them for a while, you, you lose that edge. And for something as critical as donning a gas mask during a chemical attack, nine seconds is a standard. Uh, and nine seconds is a standard because if you don't do it with that time and you don't uh, know how to fit the mask properly and clear it properly, um, the, those seconds can cost you. It's valuable time uh, that can make the difference between life and death.